What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. As always, I'm your host Robbie, and in today's video we're going to be covering Shopify meta fields, meta objects, and dynamic data. So if you want to learn about that stuff, make sure to stick around, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and uh, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's talk about what everything is. So a meta field is just a way to attach additional data to a Shopify object. So it's great for things like part numbers, color swatches, launch dates, really anything. And you can attach it to products, collections, articles, blogs, really any object in Shopify. A meta object is basically a bunch of meta fields put together to form a more complex object. And then custom data is just a way to connect meta fields to sections. So it's all pretty simple and it can all be done in native Shopify now. So in a previous video, I showed you how to add meta fields using an app called Meta Fields Guru. This is outdated now. You no longer need an app to do it. It's all built into Shopify. So to add a meta field, you just go to settings and you go to custom data down here. And then here's all the objects you can add uh, meta fields to. So let's say we want to add one to a product and uh, we just go add definition and then you can set it up right here. So let's actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the product editor. So let's go inside here. And what you can see is uh, Shopify really only gives you a couple places to store data. So you have the title, description, maybe some images, and some other stuff, but maybe you need something that's not on here. Maybe you need a short description or you wanna show an estimated shipping date or something like that. Um, these are all great uses for meta fields. So let's go ahead and add one. Let's go back here, custom data. Let's go to products. Add definition, and let's just say we're going to show an estimated shipping date. So let's call it estimated shipping date. And then it's going to automatically create a namespace and key. This is how you select it if you want to render it in your template. You can give it a description that's optional, and then you select a type down here. So there's a bunch of different types you can do. So for instance, single line text, multi line, you can do dates, there's some volume stuff, numbers, all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's just do a single line text for now and we'll say hey it's just going to be one value and we'll make it available on the storefront and hit save so we just created a uh, meta field and you'll see there's pinned meta fields and unpinned meta fields and i'll show you what that means in a second so we just added this to products so let's go back and check out the product page right here and now if we scroll all the way down we can see it down here so maybe we want to show will ship within two weeks. We can save that. And now this data is saved to this specific product. All right, so I'm editing the video right now. I forgot to show you what pinned and unpinned means. So if we go back to the product page and we scroll down to the bottom, so pinned meta fields are gonna show up right here without having to do anything special. And then to see unpinned meta fields, you have to click into it. And that's the only difference. You can pin up to 20 meta fields and the rest will be in unpinned. So I hope that helps. Back to the video. So now maybe we want to display that in our template. I'll show you the direct way to do that real quick. If we go back here, um, and we go to, whoa. If we go to custom data products, we can see our meta field right here and it shows us how to select it down here. So let's copy this. And then let's go to our template. Um, so I got my product page pulled up right here. And here's my add to cart button. Maybe I want to show it right below that. So we could do a P tag. And then we do the liquid brackets and just paste in that selector they gave us. So product.metafields.custom and then the name we gave it. Hit save. And now that data should display on the page. So let's check it out. Let's go back here and refresh. And we get will ship within two weeks. And then if we go to a different product, it won't show anything because we haven't added the data for it. So one problem we have is that it's still gonna show a P tag just because um, we're rendering it whether there's a meta field or not. So to fix that, we could wrap it in an if tag. So let's just go if, and then we're gonna check for this specific meta field and make sure that it's not equal to blank. And then end if. And that would fix it so now we won't get a p tag at all on uh, products that don't have this meta field and that's pretty cool so maybe we want to build a specs table i i did an example here and um you know we could build this section and we could put in meta fields for each one and you know render them like this 
But uh, Shopify added this dynamic data stuff to where you no longer have to do it like that. So we can just build our sections how we normally would with normal settings. So I have six settings down here. Uh, row one label, row one value, row two text, uh, label, value, whatever. And uh, let us let me show you how you can connect uh, metafields to this. So let's go back to our store. And let's go to online store, um, customize theme. Let's go to the product template. And uh, I already added it here. I tried this video once before. This is take two. Let's add it. So mine's just called specs down here. And you can see I have settings for each one of these. So if I just use the settings directly like this, it's gonna add it, but the problem is it'll be exactly the same on every product page. So what you can do is use this dynamic data button right here, and it lets you connect it to a meta field. So we didn't create meta fields for this section yet, so let's do that. Let's just hit save and go back. And let's go to settings. We'll go back to custom data products, add a definition, and let's add row one label. And uh, I tried this before, so let's just make it row one label two, make it available on storefronts. Uh, we'll go single line text, hit save. Let's add another one for the value. So row one value. Uh, it's also single line text, available on storefronts, hit save. And we can go through and do that for each row, but you can see how that could kind of be a bad way to do it. But let's just try it out with the first row for now. So let's go back and let's go to customize theme again. Or first let's add it in our product. So let's go down here and let's just go with is 400 inches. Hit save. And then let's go to online store, customize theme. Now let's go to the product page and then we'll go to that section and instead of uh, Typing into the settings, we're going to connect it to our meta field. Let's delete all that, hit the dynamic button, and we'll say, hey, for that, use the row one label meta field. And for this one, use the row one value. Hit save. And uh, let's go back to the right product. Refresh. And there we go. We get, I did it backwards, but we got 400 inches is width. So what did I do wrong? Did I type it wrong on the product page? We go down. Yeah, I just mixed it up here. So actually the label should be width and uh, the value should be 400 inches. And that's cool because now we can add it um, different for every single product. And that'll update in just a second. Sometimes it's a little slow to update. So we'll give it a second. But that's pretty cool because you can do it on Every product can have different specs now, but the problem with this is that we really had to, you know, create meta fields for each row when really we should be able to do a loop here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So that's kind of where meta objects came into play, and that's just a collection of meta fields. So let's create one of those. Let's go back to settings and let's go to custom data. And uh, let's make sure that updated. There we go. And then you can create meta objects down here. So I created one earlier. I'm going to delete that. Let's create a new one. And we'll call this specs row. And uh, this meta object is going to consist of a single line text field. And uh, we'll just call this label. And hit add. And it's also going to consist of a value. All right, and then let's hit save. So now we have this object and to create objects, um, you can go into the content tab right here and go to meta objects and let's create our first one. So let's go add entry and we're creating a specs row and let's just go width is uh, 32 inches. Hit save. And um, yeah, I think that's good. Let's just create one for now. And now to connect that to our section, we have to create a reference field. So let's go back here and uh, let's delete these row one, row two values. And instead, 
Let's create a new meta field called specs rows. And then for types, or for type, we're gonna go to references and we're gonna reference a meta object and it's gonna be a list of entries since we'll have multiple rows. And then uh, we'll connect it to specs row and hit save before we have to make it available on storefronts actually. Hit save. And now we go to our product. Scroll to the bottom and now we have specs rows. So let's add one so we could select the one we already created. Um, and then let's add another one. So let's go create new entry. We'll call this one uh, height is 40 inches. Save that. It's going to connect it here. So now we have two connected. Let's add another one called weight. And we actually have to create it. So let's go weight is uh, two pounds. Save it. Now we got three connected. Let's save all that. And now let's look at how we could build a section that um, could use that list of specs rows. So here's the original section we used where I did separate settings for every single um, row. And you can, if you scroll down here, you can see the settings. And then if we we're to use the meta objects list, we could do um, blocks. So this is the same thing, except instead of having separate settings, I used blocks and the block has settings for uh, label and value. And you can see the schema down here. So let's try to use this one right here. So let's go back, we'll go customize theme, go to the product page, let's delete this one and you can see that we deleted those meta fields so it's given us errors. Let's remove that, instead let's use the version which uses blocks. And uh, if you've ever built a section with blocks it basically lets you add rows. So I could manually add rows here. And that's cool, but same issue. It's going to be the same on every single product page. So we really need to connect that to meta fields. So let's remove these extra blocks. And then let's go into the first row here. Let's delete all this. And then instead of connecting it here, we're going to go to the parent and say, hey, let's connect this to that meta object list we created. And it's going to populate these two. Let's hit save. And now it should be connected. So let's go back here. And we should have three rows if it worked correctly. And there we go, we get width, height, and weight. So that's really cool, right? So you could build some pretty complex stuff here. And uh, yeah, it's basically meta fields, uh, nice and quick. So I hope this video helped you. Um, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you're there, and I'll see you in the next video, bye.